is about um, optimal control of mixed hobby system, and we're a team of three members. <coughs> this is Ahmed Lisa, this is David Cortes, and myself, Lydia Jacob, and our faculty supervisor, Dr. Gerber. Today we will give you a short introduction of our project, um, what problems we had, uh, what requirements that we had to um, achieve, and uh, how we approached it. And then we're going to talk about the algorithm and design, and how we tested it. And finally, we're going to talk about the administrative steps for the project. Our project is for a uh, mixed home heating system with a particular focus on heat pump and oil furnace. Uh, there are two major goals for this project. Uh, one of the goals is to determine the utility efficiency of a given heat pump and oil furnace uh, based on the local prices of electricity and heating oil uh, in order to save cost. The other major goal is to reduce greenhouse gases uh, with a main focus on carbon dioxide emission. Uh, because carbon dioxide emission is one of the major causes of global warming, uh, what it does is it absorbs heat from the sun, and absorbs um, infrared, infrared radiation from the sun, and traps heat into the Earth's atmosphere. Um, according to a study by the University of California, 40 tons of carbon dioxide is emitted each year from a typical household in the United States. <coughs> And out of that 40 tons, 20 tons of carbon dioxide is just emitted from the, just the heating system itself. And according to Energy Information Administration, um, from 2000 to 2005, the emission grew four times than the past 10 years. As you can see up there, uh, from the year 1990 to 1999, it was about 0.8% of increase. And from 2000 to 2005, it grew up to 3.2% of increase, which is four times than 1990 uh, We have two requirements for this project. First requirement is to determine the uh, precise efficiency of the two heating systems, and the system should choose the most efficient of the two in order to save cost. And the second requirement is to determine um, the carbon dioxide emission and choose the system which uh, emits less carbon dioxide at a given period of time. The way we approached it, uh, it's supposed to be two temperatures, uh, one for inside and the other one is outside temperatures. And it should calculate the cost and efficiency from the given temperatures that was read, and also the carbon dioxide <coughs> emission. And the system has three modes, one for saving money, the other one for carbon dioxide emission, the third one manual operation. So if the user wants to save money, he can choose mode one for saving money. And the system calculates the cost of each heating system, and it will switch to the heating system, which is less expensive. And on the other hand, if the user wants to use uh, carbon dioxide emission mode, that will calculate the carbon dioxide emission for two heating systems and will switch to the heating system which, is, uh, which emits less carbon dioxide. And finally, the manual operation, if the user wants to manually choose if he wants to use heat pump or oil furnace, uh, he can use the manual operation and use the desired uh, heating system. So as Lee just said, we need to first determine the cost for, of each heating system as well as the carbon dioxide produced for our uh, oil furnace and the heat pump. And we did this in terms of dollars per kilowatt hour of heat delivered and kilograms per kilowatt hour of heat delivered. And these values here are basically A to F, A to P, which is the efficiency of the oil furnace and heat pumps uh, respectively. And the unit price is PF and PE of the oil and electricity in the region. So when heating with the oil furnace, we had to determine the amount of energy needed to generate to deliver one kilowatt heat, uh, hour of heat. And this is simply the uh, inverse of the uh, efficiency of the oil furnace. And from that calculation, we can then determine the amount of oil to burn. This, uh, is based, this equation here is based on the uh, specific weight and the net heat value of oil. And from then, we then determine the, uh, the cost in dollars per kilowatt hour of heat delivered using unit conversion. So continuing with the oil <coughs> furnace, we also determine the uh, carbon dioxide produced from burning that amount of oil. This is simply this cold equation here. <coughs> and the efficiency of an oil furnace is a constant value that varies uh, from furnace to furnace from 80 to 95 percent. For our uh, system, we have an oil furnace with an efficiency of around 85 percent. So we took that value. Now with the heat pump, we also had to determine the uh, amount of energy to buy to deliver one kilowatt hour of heat. This is also the uh, inverse of the efficiency of the pump. 
and the cost is the unit price multiplied by that. And the efficiency of the pump can be uh, found with this theoretical curve, which basically shows that while uh, temperature difference increases, the efficiency of the heat pump decreases. And from the cur that theoretical curve, we had practical curves, which is based on machinery of each heat pump. And we took an average of the practical curves and did a linear approximation for our algorithm. And with the, when you generate electricity, you produce carbon dioxide from the power generation share. And our region, we uh, focus on <coughs> Northern Virginia. As you can see uh, from the pie chart, it's highly, uh, majorly from nuclear and coal. Nuclear doesn't produce uh, carbon dioxide when you generate electricity with that, but coal, uh, gas, and oil do. So we are able to determine the uh, carbon dioxide produced when generating electricity. Right, this graph is the outside <coughs> temperature versus the cost. Uh, each line represents the heating system cost based on the different prices and where they intersect are the switching points. So for example, this yellow line here is uh, 20 cents per kilowatt hour of heat delivered. And this horizontal green line is the uh, cost of oil furnace at $4 per gallon. The uh, oil furnace is only dependent on the price, not the outside temperature. However, the uh, heat pump is dependent on the outside temperature. As you can see, when it's a low temperature, it costs a lot more to operate in the heat pump. So here, at this intersection, it's uh, around negative three degrees Celsius. So any temperature below that would be, uh, the oil furnace would be operating for the cost efficient mode. And for the carbon dioxide, uh, mode we had, we found a switching point of about negative two degrees. This varies by region for the heat pump, but the oil furnace will be constant. And it's also dependent on the outside temperature for the heat pump. So. For the implementation for our project, uh, we used uh, two DS-160 temperature sensors. They are uh, digital temperature sensors. The uh, MSB4 Fairy microcontroller and uh, LCD screen and the heater. Uh, for our project, the, sch the schematic for the design, uh, we have the LCD connected to 8-bit data cable and 3-bit uh, control signals and uh, outdoor temperature sensors, which is uh, connected to the microcontroller using spy Three wire spy interface, and uh, the indoor the, this, the indoor temperature sensor it's connected in the same way since they are identical, and the keypad is three by four uh, interrupted driven to the microcontroller. For the DS1620, we connected uh, <coughs> using the spy protocol. We provided the 100 kilohertz as a clock to the chip, and. It's, it's uh, reading after providing, after requesting the temperature. Uh, the temperature sensor took around uh, 800 na uh, nanoseconds to complete the conversion. And then the microcontroller acting as a, as a master and then the uh, nine bits to receive the temperature. For our software, which we implemented in the microcontroller, we can see the flow chart. Uh, it starts by reading the indoor and the outdoor temperature, and then the user will choose which mode to operate, either CO2 or the manual mode or the post. In the three cases, if the indoor temperature is greater than the temperature, the outdoor temperature, the system won't operate because of that's logic that when you, the temperature is higher, so you don't want, want to make any more heat. Uh, after choosing which mode to operate, the microcontroller will do the right calculation and then choose which system to operate, either the oil fairness or the heat pump. Now we're going to show a demo video for uh, our testing for our system. <coughs> As we can see, this is the outdoor temperature sensor, which we used like to, we put it in the ECE department refrigerator, so we get uh, below the zero degrees Celsius temperatures. We try to cover it and shield it, so we reduce the humid that goes inside. <coughs>
We use distinct points for like four dollars per gallon for the oil and 15 cents for the electricity. We provided these values, as you can see. So the system will operate in the bump right now. And we can like, we made, made the interface so the user can check the value and the desired temperature that he provided. The system should switch at minus six, and that's what we had, as you can see that shifted to the oil. And when we took the temperature out and we tried to give it more heat, so it goes back to the oil, uh, the pump. <laughs> As you can see now, we just think that CO2 mode. So whatever <laughs> like the price, uh, the price of the uh, microcontroller should operate at minus 0.25. Switch the system. So it's compared to the uh, shifted to the the oil fairness. For the testing result, like the mm. most factor that we were struggling with and we had trouble is connecting the temperature sensor to the microcontroller. It wasn't an easy task. Uh, the freeze by protocol, it's kind of, uh, it has like a lot of small issues since the, the chip is very sensitive. So a lot of factors like it plays a role on uh, getting the right uh, values and make it reading and communicate to the microcontroller. Uh, these are our testing points that we use for the cost mode and the CO2 mode. And like the next slide, we show it that on a graph. So like $2 per gallon and 20 cents for the electricity, and 3 gallon and 15 cents for the electricity, and $4 for the oil and 15 cents for the electricity. These are our testing. We can see from the graph that as and, and this point will intersect with the axis. This is the switching point. So here it switch at minus six, and for when the value are for, for the CO2 mode, it switch at minus 2.5, and when the temperature is is higher than the desired, so the system will won't operate. The hours and the funds spent on our senior design. Uh, the man hours was around 330, and these are the costs for the components. So the total cost for our senior design was around $8,350. Uh, the individual contribution, I, Ahmed al Isa, and my colleague David, we were working in the hardware and the software design and testing. Ligia, the project manager, she worked in the data collection and this thing as well. The lesson that we learned, uh, as you can see, and the most important part, which summarize everything, be professional uh, and have fun for your senior design. And the special thanks and a big thank for our supervisor, Dr. Gertler. He always made sure that we are going on the right track and each time we have any problem, he was more open to help and Dr. Capps and Dr. Robert uh, Erlich, the chairman of the physics department, and Dr. Cook, and uh, finally, the, all the ECE faculty, because on my, on my behalf and, and on my team behalf, we are sure that the, the senior design is a product of all the knowledge that we gained on all the other courses. And I remember before I came to the main campus, one of the professors told me, there is nothing to any doctor and nothing make him happy more than to carry the knowledge that he has to his students. And thank you and the questions and discussion.